Let's go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our Thursday AMA. Um, we're going to get right into this one. Uh, before the recording started, uh, one of our community members, Top Secret, asked us a question uh, regarding what happened with Shinja. You just heard about it, so we'll, we'll get right into it. Obviously, uh, we had an AMA with the Shinobi community yesterday uh, where we uh, pretty much gave our proposal as to why we think uh, it would be a good fit for us to come in and kind of like uh, take over and introduce Shibnobi into the Shiba Doge ecosystem. <clears throat> Obviously, um, the the uh, the offers and proposals we made are are contingent on us finishing our due diligence and getting uh, pretty much approval from legal before making any final decisions or anything like that. So there's still a lot of unanswered questions and still a lot of things that are up in the air, but. What did you, what exactly did you did you want to um, get into top secret with your question if you wanted to get a little bit more specific no because obviously we we're just talking about you know of um, how it was back in the days uh, when you know when Shinjo was obviously running at full steam ahead but then and then now and then I was just kind of just wondering are we, are we kind of uh, merging for the communities to come over or uh, is yeah. there some sort of acquisition? Or, uh, I don't know. So I, I was just hearing about it all today. That's all. Gotcha, gotcha. Right. So <clears throat> what what even kind of like really motivated us to, to even come to this conclusion and decide to, to step in and offer a helping hand is because, let, let's be real, at the end of the day, we would never do anything that's not going to be beneficial to the project or to the community. So, so yes, we are putting ourselves in the winning position by, by you know, making this offer. We're not just doing it out of only the kindness of our hearts that there, there is something for the, the shiba doji ecosystem to gain out of you know acquiring shinja and that would be you know access to uh, a lot of the things that they've built their community their socials their pretty much numbers right so n numbers add up and you know I, I feel like uh we all know this but there's more power in numbers but also at the uh, flip end of things, we don't want to see that community fall apart either. It, it's not in anyone's best interest to see, you know, a project that was able to reach, you know, I, I believe they were at like close to $2 billion in market cap at their, their all time high um, to, to dwindle down to nothing and kind of leave a bad reputation and a bad name for, for Web3. So, you know, we feel like it's part of our duty to try to see if we can save it or salvage it in the sense where i mean it's it's a great testament of how leadership can either make or break you as 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 a project or a business or whatever and i mean i don't really want to get into the personal things as to like what happened over there most of you guys already know it was a lot of sketchy things that had happened that pretty much led to the the issues that are um being talked about today uh obviously we know it was a, a shit show and a shit storm but that's not really holding us back from kind of you know still wanting to to step in and introduce you know that ecosystem to our ecosystem kind of like merge the communities together our, our plan a would is to uh, you know if this were to happen our plan a is to keep shinja running keep keep its brand going keep it as a standalone project and try to revive it and you know just you know kind of like treat it less as as if we treat one of our projects in our community the plan b which is in my opinion like the last resort we don't want to do this but unless there's no other choice would be to kind of like merge the two into into shiva doge into one where that would obviously you know double triple the the holder base of shiva doge overnight um, but that also comes with a lot of uncertainty and a lot of unanswered questions. So we're not going to just be, you know, making that decision uh, anytime soon. Uh, there is still like a plan, two other plans that we're kind of putting together uh, that would be alternatives that would, you know, obviously go before uh, a merger even is even considered. But uh, yeah, man, I mean, at the end of the day, the main reason, the one and only reason why we want to do this is, you know, to try to kind of like 
show everyone that we are about unity, that we we do care. We do want to step in and save things. We don't want to see something fall apart, um, especially the amount of people who feel like they've been uh, wrong uh, in that project. There's a lot. I've been reading their chats for the past few days. Um, and a lot of people feel uh, like they've been they've been wronged, you know, and I mean, people are in, entitled to feel how they feel. At the end of the day, we everyone always knows, you know, don't invest no more money than you're willing to lose because obviously things like that happen in this space. Now, that's one of the reasons why we even started Shiva Doge is because we want it to be a project that doesn't have to worry about things like that happening and doesn't have to worry about, you know, any of the shady stuff. And, you know, we wanted to be a true testament of, of all the good that's in crypto and kind of like call out all the bad and try to fix, not fix, but kind of like, condemn the bad that happens on on in crypto but regardless what's happened there has happened whether they accept um our, our help that's up to their community we don't want to take over a community that doesn't want us we're not forcing anything on anyone um we do think it would be beneficial to both communities though if it were to happen but um at the from the bottom of my heart if they don't want us we don't want that you know like that's that's I'll make that clear that, that, you know, business is always business, but, you know, well, we're not going to, we're not going to adopt a, a, a crazy Rottweiler that's going to be, you know, hunting down everybody in our families. Right. So, so we'll see, we'll see how they, they react. There's a lot of people in that community that like it. There's a lot of people that are against it. There are some people that are neutral. So over the next few days, I guess we'll kind of get a better understanding of, of what they want to do and, in the meantime, we'll we'll get a better understanding of what our due diligence uncovers and and kind of what our legal uh, team uncovers as well too. So I mean, it, it's very possible that our legal team could just come back and say, "Hey, don't touch this with a with a ten foot pole. Like, stay away. Don't touch it. There's too much liability. There's too much this that." So those are still stuff we have to wait for before we can you know move forward. Yeah, awesome. I uh, just think, um, in a way, like obviously, it's great to help, but uh, at the same time, we just don't want to lose focus on um, trying to, you know, um, push another brand in 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 some way. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, that's why that's Thanks. why we would actually uh, hire a um, a dedicated team to to pretty much to run the show. Obviously, you know, for, for we wouldn't be able to. Um, kind of like be the dedicated team that's running that exclusively, right? We'd give it a, the Shiva Doge treatment and we'd give it uh, the same treatment as we do all of our other projects. But at the root of it all, you know, like anything in our ecosystem is part of part of the family and, and everything we do for any project in our ecosystem, it goes, you know, hand in hand for, for, for everything. So. But yeah, you're right. I get exactly awesome. what you're saying. We don't want to lose focus on, on what we have going on here. Yep. Thanks, Leah. Thanks for the update. I'll just jump in and definitely say that focus is something that we are extremely keen on, something that we're very in tune to make sure that we don't stray away from what we're trying to do. But I think personally, from an advantageous standpoint, that both communities can benefit from a singular focus on the roadmap that Shiva Doge does have and where we're trying to go. And so if there is, you know, if, if, if there's a consolidated effort where we are all working towards the big common goal, then boom, we have ourselves a much, much larger community within Web3 that is already small in comparison to like the big industries in the world. And we're able to kind of put them together and focus on what Shiva Doge is trying to do. We can kind of transform a lot of these projects or a lot of what the, the holders of, of Shinja, for example, um, into the direction that we're trying to go. So I think there's yeah, a big, makes sense. yeah, there's a big, there's a big opportunity to put them together. Um, the communities are very alike. We got to, there is going to be very, you know, as this industry emerges and, and kind of becomes bigger, it's going to be 
really difficult to, to acquire an audience or to put together an audience that's going to make your message more impactful. And our message will be that much more impactful if we have an army on two fronts. It's, it's kind of the in, original intention behind Shiba Doge as a whole. So hopefully that'll come across and hopefully we can all see that as being the plan forward. But if not, it is what it is. Thanks for the update, guys. No problemo. Um, on another note, uh, we have breeding going live on Monday. So I'm sure everybody is uh, more than excited for that. <laughs> so <laughs> we've been doing some uh, some last minute comprehensive testing and, and everything is coming along pretty well. So, I mean, at, at that, obviously the news yesterday kind of uh, took the attention away from, from that. And um, we were kind of like more focused on what's going on with, with, with that conversation too, just for the past 24 hours, but we can't, we can't let our focus stray away because we do have a big month planned as, as you guys all know. Um, we have a huge month of releases coming out and um, a couple things up our sleeve. So time to time to get back to, to work on our end and kind of like we'll passively see how, um, you know, the Shinja community reacts to, to what we talked about um, over the past day. So, I mean, regardless, what, whatever they decide is, is what they decide as a community and, and we'll know at least we've done our part moving forward. But at the root of it all, we're going to continue staying strong and dedicated to our projects and continue building and continue um, innovating for however way we can moving forward. And, you know, obviously our, our main goal has always been to bridge the gap between Doge and Shiba and pretty much every other um, uh, part of Unity we could get into with any other project, whatever. Um, that's always been the goal. And the goal is to always have uh, a, a tight knit family and, you know, uh, have each other's backs. And that's what we're going to focus on. And that's how, that's how we're going to continue to grow as a community. Yeah, for sure. Um, Leo, so we basically are in a very good place with the product. Um, we, we have tested it thoroughly. There are definitely some kinks we still need to work out through the weekend leading up to launch. But from a breeding standpoint, we have now confirmed and tested that all items are going to be equipable, unequipable. They are going to be on chain, which is a very big deal. This is one of the things that differentiate us from, you know, a lot of other projects or from, frankly, any, any NFT project. It's sort of setting the industry standard. And we are able to uh, equip, you know, a series of items. And so the way that it's going to work, I guess this would be important to kind of, kind of express. So day one, we have the breeding live. Everyone is going to have access to common items. This is um, no different than any MMORPG, any game that you would have normally seen. You are going to have access to common items. That's what you're going to be able to mint. When you mint your Shiba Doge, you are going to be able to get um, a series of items, whether it's the background, whether it's the fur, whether it's the eyes, whether it's the primary weapon, the secondary weapon, etc. That is something that you're going to be able to do. Shortly thereafter, we're going to be announcing the armory and the armory is where you're going to be able to actually customize it after you've minted your NFT. So people can choose to do that, you know, wait for the armory or they can just, um, you know, decide to mint it, breed and then use the armory shortly thereafter. But the idea is that you will have access to higher rarities based on your rank. So if your rank is, and your rank is determined based on a score of 10. So your score being one through five, let's just say, um, well, not let's just say, but sorry. Uh, if you have a general and you pair that with the general equivalent on the Sheba army, you are rank four plus four, which means you're rank eight. So that means that you're going to be eight out of 10 
and you're going to have access to items that are not available to people that are below the rank that you have. So it's in your best interest to combine the highest ranks possible together uh, before you go out and do the, 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 the combinations that you would normally do for, for privates and the, 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 the most common ones. And there's going to be two stores. There's going to be two fronts, storefronts. And we're calling it, um, actually the name is TBD, but we'll, we'll get there when we get there. So there's going to be a black market and a general store. And the general store is going to be where you can always have access to common items. Common items are infinite in quantity. There's no limit to the amount of quantity that you can have uh, for those items. So for example, if there is a frying pan, which actually is a rare item, but if you have a frying pan, you will be able to mint an unlimited number of those in pair with your Shiba Doge. So you will be able to get as many of those as you want if that's an item that you think is going to be exciting, rare, whatever it may be. And through the process of the breeding, it's going to be very interesting because there's going to be an entire new economy being built where some items may become more rare just based on what people are breeding. So it's something that you guys definitely want to be in tuned on or in tune with. And then we have the black market and the black market is going to be where all the items above the common rank are going to be available. So we're going to do a, a sort of like hype beast style drop. Think about it as like easy dropping um, new, uh, the newest pair of Yeezys, I guess, is probably the best comparison I can have. And we're going to do time-based allocations where a certain limited supply, limited quantity of items are going to be available on the black market. And those items are going to be claimable. They're not going to be available for purchase. So these items that we're going to do in season one for the first period of time that, that the breeding is available, we're not going to, at, we're not going to offer them for any price. These are priceless in a sense. And there may be 15 ray guns. And the sooner you can get into the, um, the site, sooner you can get into the application, you're going to be able to claim them. So every single person that qualifies for a claim will have the ability to claim. But once the supply runs out, well, then it's, then it's kind of sold out. So you'll be able to go in there, claim the items that you want for the period of time that it's available. So let's say on day one of the armory being live, there may be six items for the first 24 hours that you're able to claim. And depending on your rank, you're able to claim various items within that. And you're only able to claim one. And we wanna keep it fair for everyone within the community. So it could very well be that the ray gun that there's only four of them in existence period. So it's going to be creating a very interesting dynamic as we launch this, this product and, and the community gets excited and also participates in how they can claim this depending on what rank they're able to breed. So it's, it's, it's highly encouraged to breed sooner rather than later. It's also highly encouraged to breed the higher ranks together. And it's also highly encouraged to be in tune with what's going on with the Telegram and the community as a whole, because you may get access to EFTs that are going to never be put back into existence. This entire first series is going to be um, a foundation and sort of a, um, a highly limited and exclusive access EFT allocation. Shortly thereafter, there will be season two, and that will be more available to the rest of the community. But for this initial batch, this is sort of the reward to the community of how you're going to get the most exclusive items that are not available to everyone else, if that makes sense. Leo, paraphrase that for me because you're better at it, and I always go deep. So there you go.
No, I think I think you 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 said it perfectly fine, and um, I think everyone kind of gets the gist of of what to expect because we've been going over it for uh, at least the past past few weeks now. Um, and I, at this point, I feel like every I'm speaking for the community when I say this, but I think at this point, everyone's just ready, and everyone has been uh, waiting for this moment to kind of like uh, come for at least the past couple of months now, and. Um, yeah, we're days away and we're more than excited. And I mean, I think we should do something fun for the community moving uh, into breeding. Obviously, breeding is coming out on Monday, which is just, you know, right around the corner. Uh, we had one promotion that we did um, a couple of weeks back where we, we for each Shiva Army Mint, we, we guaranteed a free EFT crate airdrop at the time when uh, the, the new collection launches. So what do you propose, Alex? I think we do this. I think we, starting right now, until the launch of breeding, every Shiba Army that gets minted from this point until the, the moment breeding launches, I say we guarantee them a free EFT crate. What do you think? I think there's definitely something that we can do. How about we announce, why don't we take that framework and we announce something on Twitter tomorrow based on exactly that, what you just said. We could do that. But I think for anybody who's listening in right now, they can, they can still, they could still participate. And yeah, yeah, we could, we could do that. We could do that. Let's, we'll just announce it on Twitter, I guess. And we'll, we'll announce it in Telegram <laughs> open as well. The supply crates are going to be very interesting because the items that are going to be released within the supply crate are going to be entirely different from anything that's been released in the ecosystem. It's going to be entirely uh, a unique element to it. They're going to be very crypto related. They're going to be very topical, very trendy. So for example, one of the items we have is an SPF hair. Um, because <laughs> <one> <laughs> Because why not? <laughs> why not? Why shouldn't you have your Shiba Doge NFT literally rocking the SBF hair? Because, you know, that's what it is. That's what like 80% of crypto is at this point. So doing something like that would be extremely cool, Leo. I'm down. I'm game. And uh, let's definitely make the most out of this, this event. And frankly, I've said this before, but, you know, if our community ends up getting all of the items... That's cool with me too, you know. I, I the the exercise was always to bring in new holders, but if we can do some really cool shit for our community, well, then I'm I'm game with that. And it's a testament to what we're gonna do with season one, season two, season three, season four in terms of actual items that we're gonna drop. So, you know, everything is gonna have a theme. Everything is going to be. You know, comic book number two is going to be ninja related. It's so ironic that we've been talking about acquiring or merging <laughs> ninja. It's so ridiculous because, you know, here I am talking with our creative team and they're like, oh, like we're going to create this next evolution of Siberia. This next, oh, by the way, Siberia. But this next evolution of the world. And here we are with creating this 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 dynamic where there are ninjas as a part of our evolving ecosystem well what does that mean for the the nfts the eft's that could be in and of itself a collection and there may very well be a limitation to if you participate in that narrative and that storyline you're going to get access to stuff that probably has a limited quantity of 10 15 supply and will never come back into existence. It's very similar to the supply crates, but doing it on a very different level. Alex, I'm more excited of the the, the carousel system that we have going on in, in the armory and, and the, the whole new black market thing that we're gonna be introducing. Um, I think that's the one thing, right? So like once, once everyone gets used to breeding and they get used to all their EFTs and everything that they own, What's the one thing that's going to keep them coming back to to interact with their NFTs and EFTs pretty much on a daily, weekly basis? And that's going to be the armory, that carousel style 
um, way of interacting with the new drops and the things that you know are never going to come back again into circulation. So it's kind of like you have no choice. You're going to want to put it on your daily task of things to do is like, hey, let me go check the armory. Let me see if there's something I like, because if if not, I'm never going to have the chance to, to mint it again. So I I, I think... I think what I think we're what doing we're here is going to be very interesting. Cool. If, if like, for example, let's just take, I mean, sorry to put you on blast top secret, but like, let's say you have two generals and you're now rank eight out of 10. So the way that the ranks are going to work is again, out of 10. So to 10 possible combinations scored five out of one out of five, and you combine the two of them, and you're able to get access to an item that only exists with a supply of maybe 15, right? There's only 15 of these items that will ever exist. There's going to be a lot of volume on the common stuff, right? That's just like, oh, if you want to just dress up your, your NFT to make it look a certain way, but now you add really exclusive functions. We haven't even talked, Leo, we have not even talked about the potential of adding additional utility and and frankly that's on the whiteboard but it's not something that we need to go there right now but what's the utility Ooh, i know what you're talking about i know what you're talking about yeah we don't know yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> there is no sorry 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 let's use a <laughs> anonymous person so top secret is not the the right example but let's just use secret top and there's various different um uh, grades and ranks of NFTs that you own and you are able to get access to, you know, items that maybe there are only 15 of them that will ever be back into existence. That's going to be in five years from now, two years from now, one year from now, it's going to mean a lot and it's going to do a lot for you. We haven't announced what these EFTs are all about, but it's all part of the world of Siberia. It's all part of the world of where we're going. And you might ask, why are these EFTs and why are these limited items something that I should care about? And and I'll answer that for you. Why were why were Pokemon cards or Yu-Gi-Oh cards anything that anyone should have cared about? Right? There, there was really nothing to them other than the fact that hey, they're just cards from a cartoon or anime or whatever. But the the reason why those became so popular and anything in that genre or anything in in that um, uh, uh, atmosphere of collectibles, let's call it. Um, why do those become popular? Is because of the media aspect behind it, the storyline and the way that it's presented to an audience. Once an audience is able to fall in love with a certain um, piece of, let, let's call it a, a, the comic book, for example, or a storyline or whatever, then you're able to scale your brand into something new. And once you're able to get fans, instead of holders, let's call them fans, right, of your, your media company, then in turn, those products that you have released over time, now they get a new meaning. Now they get a new sense of um, value because now you have, you have a, a storyline that kind of uh, gives, gives it life, gives it a, a, a place to live. And, and that's, that's why uh, one of our main goals is to uh, really turn into a storytelling project and have a media company and have a, uh, a storyline for Shiba Doge and the entire ecosystem is because we understand how big of an IP opportunity it is. Um, and and I, I think we're, we're going to be taking full advantage of that avenue. Well, uh, I wouldn't be saying too much, Lee. I think people are going to start joining the dots very soon, man. So. <laughs> <laughs> It's fine, man. If they can figure it out, then more power to them. So you do you think eventually that you will put these NFTs on a game like Pokemon Go and stuff and make it that big? Well, that's the that's the plan is to try to get it as big as we possibly can. Now, um, whether we'll be implementing ourselves on already uh, established games, I don't know about that. But eventually, um, I don't want to say we'll have a game per se, 
uh, all, all roads do lead to that uh, final outcome, but it, we just feel that it's kind of tacky to have a game and we're just trying to brainstorm different avenues as to how we can gamify the NFTs and the EFTs moving forward. But um, the, 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 I'll, the jump in. Is- I'll jump in because like, Leo, how many times have I told you I, I can't stand that like some of these projects are just doing mini games where it's just like, okay, cool. Like, yeah, yeah. Right. You've got you've got a game that's going to be, um, that's got maybe maybe you got three sessions in there, like maybe you got somebody who's going to play that thing for three, you know, thirteen minutes. Like that's not. I, I don't. I don't think that's the play for us. But if you look at the highest grossing franchises in the world. You know, what is the product? What is the actual thing that we all like? Everyone knows Ash Ketchum that 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 grew up with Pokemon. Everyone knows, you know, what the brand and the IP behind Hello Kitty is. Everyone knows what Star Wars is. Right. And so what what does that mean for the Web3 space as sort of a differentiator? And how do you separate you know, this world that has existed for many, many years, call it the last hundred years. And how do you give back ownership into that content being the product? That I think is one of our biggest opportunities, just sheerly based on the name that we have. If you think about what is being done in the Shiba, what is being done in the Dogecoin communities, and I'm very involved in it. I'm very involved in both of those. And I still hold many, many tokens in both of those. I I lack the, I guess I just really am frustrated with the level of production, the level of quality content that's coming out that's going to attract me as let's just say separating myself from a crypto investor, what is going to attract me to being interested in this community? Like, because at the end of the day, it's the community that set, that really makes these projects successful. And we always say that. And I think that's becoming a cliche. It's kind of an unfortunate, but, but at the end of the day, there's, there's a world being built in Dogecoin. There's a world being built in Shiba. There's a world in all of those. There's a there's a personality that comes across that you can put into words. And what if you were able to create content that is going to be accepted by those communities as being something worth watching, worth enjoying, worth uh, consuming? What do you do? Like, how do you get like? How does that transform or translate into what we're trying to do? And I think it's an obvious bridge. I think it's an obvious bridge to be able to create content that people are very enthused about and then being able to participate in our community because we get it as a community. Like all of you guys get it. You know, we can talk about this from the from the mountaintops, but you guys all get it. From the moment that you guys signed on to even being a part of this project, you guys knew Shiba, Doge, we're going to combine the communities. Okay. Well, what does that mean? That means doing doing things differently than all these other communities are already naturally doing. And the thing is, most of them, actually both of them, don't have an ongoing development team that are going to support that, uh, that next step. And it's very fundamentally different than what's happening with any other Web3 project. I will bet the farm, I will bet the farm as strategically as possible. And Leo supports me on this, I know, because we've talked about this at great length. But content is, when it comes to a meme coin, content is the product. Community is the end result. Community is the end result. So how do you create a community? And what's the thing that everyone can be entertained with? Everyone can be engaged with? Well, that's content. So let's double down, 10x our investment into that. And then guess what? What happens? You know, when 50 million people are watching the equivalent of a Dragon Ball Z series, but it's the Doge and the Shiba army, 
you know, what happens in every single Dogecoin holder, every single Shiba coin holder, and they're watching our product, our content product. What does that mean? What does that mean for our project? It could be anything. No, that's the right move. The, that that that's the correct way, in my opinion, and in our opinion, to to scale a meme coin. Because you know, we could be on every billboard in Times Square, which we've done, um, but all that is just in the moment. You know, once once those ads go down, then it's gone forever. I mean, it's it, the the point is. The conventional way of marketing for meme coins over the past like couple of years is 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 done. Like no one no one is going to find success doing it the, the way that they were doing it two years ago or even last year. The only way to actually make it and make it big is to literally become become something that people care about. And and the way to do that is to have a great storyline. And the way to do that is to have a, a, a great media outlet, uh, have great products, even have some uh, utilities here and there. Even though when we're even though we're a meme coin, we, you know, we, we didn't we never had the idea from the start to like start developing utilities. But as this thing grew and as we realized the true potential of what we what we've built here, it it only makes sense to implement and create new utilities for the space uh, moving forward. I, I said it once in the AMA before, uh, in the future, the, the only meme about us being a meme coin would be that meme that we're a meme coin, <laughs> right? And and that that's like a, it's a funny way to put it because we started off as a meme coin, we still currently are a meme coin, we'll always still be a meme coin, but, we're going to defy the rules of what a meme coin is, and we're going to set the new standard. Now, people might be listening to that from, from the outside and laughing and chuckling and, and whatever and say, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. That's fine. I, I don't, we don't expect anyone to, like, I'm not the type of person to believe everything I hear either. I, I like to, to see it with my own eyes before I believe it. But the track record that we've been setting as, community leaders and just as people that you guys have known over the past year at this point, you guys know we always deliver on our word. We always come through. We never say we're going to do anything and not do it. Everything that we we manifest and put out there, we make sure it gets done. So I think with that type of work ethic and this type of vision, our future is very bright. Our ecosystem is still very small. If you think about it, we have a lot of room to grow. We have a lot of people who are going to be onboarding over the coming years. And I, I'll continue to say it. We're still extremely early, man. Anybody here is extremely, extremely early. It's not about being early and saying like, oh, here, I'm, I'm in here at a good market cap or I'm in here at a good price or, you know, I'm here before we shed a zero. That's not the point. That's not what I'm trying to get at. I'm trying to let you guys know that what we're doing right now what we've accomplished so far is pretty much nothing compared to what we want to accomplish. We're just getting started. And that's something that everyone should be excited for. Amen to that, man. And the thing is, Leo, everyone has to realize as well, it's not just early, it's, it's being in this space as well. So if you've been in this community from day one and the progression of, of what you guys have done till now, it's, uh, yeah, it's been fantastic. So um, like you said, we're very early. It's just the beginning. <laughs> yeah, man, it, it, it's just the beginning. And I mean, like you said too, it's, it's it's a matter of the space. The space can can really play a toll on people, especially people who are building in the space, because it, it it's a great space full of great people, but it's also one of the most toxic spaces that you can be in as well. And obviously, we never let any of the negativity get to us. If we did, then we'd literally drive ourselves nuts. So that that's one thing that we we were able to recognize and that's a lot of the re that's the main reason why a lot of these projects don't make it is because they can't handle the pressure but you know outside of crypto we've we've done some pretty big endeavors and we've built some pretty big uh successful businesses as well so we know what it takes to to 
you know, work under pressure and uh, we know what it takes to, to manage hundreds and thousands of people. And I think uh, a lot of those experiences are really paying off with the, the, the way that we're able to implement, you know, what we've learned in our past experiences into our, our future endeavors. So, I mean, I, I, yeah. I personally think we're in a good spot. I think, I think they created a product that it's going to be a household name, you know, in years to come. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be very, very interesting and in where this space is going to be. Um, and Shiba Doge has been there <laughs> since day one. So it's going to be interesting. Yes, sir. I mean, you think about what happens, you know, three, six, 12 months from now, and you realize the potential opportunities when we built, when everyone else was shutting their companies down, everyone else was transitioning. Everyone else realized that it wasn't, it didn't make any sense because their mints stopped happening or their taxes stopped recurring, you know, and for us to just come in there and say, you know what, we're going to build this. And we don't, like, frankly, we're looking at the bigger picture as to what this can be on setting an industry standard. That's going to be huge. That's going to be huge. Even if, even if overnight the ETH result or the volume result isn't necessarily there, it's, from a technological standpoint, we're setting the pace for where this industry should go. Um, Alex, Coca-Cola sold five bottles of Coke the first year that they were open. Well, that I mean, he was just not hustling enough, man. I mean, I could have sold, <laughs> yeah, sold five Cokes in 14 seconds. And, and how much would those Cokes be, be, be now, Leo? Uh, are we talking about the real Coke that's inside the Coke or? <laughs> no, no, like an actual bottle of, well, I'm sure, yeah, there was, there was, Dude, there was enough Coke inside a Coke where, you know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, but the point is, if you, were, if you had one of those first bottles of Coca-Cola, if you owned it and you were one of the five people that bought it that first year that, that you know, they failed to sell more than five bottles, imagine how much that one bottle of Coca-Cola will be worth right now. Just imagine. <laughs> Whatever it is on the, on, on, on the, on the, um, on the black market there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you don't get arrested for trying to sell it, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly, Leo. Yeah. And that's why I've still got a, a whole majority of these NFTs, man. It's still, it's still here. It's, it's ready for breeding, man. It's ready for breeding. Let's go. I've got everything oh, dead. Oh, Alex, uh, a quick one, my oh, friend, this, this, we are we are we are going to get the layer two solution in just for you, just for you. <laughs> <laughs> quick question, Alex, on that, um, on the breeding side. Um, so it goes into a platform. It brings up all your NFTs, um, and does it kind of pair it up in a way where it tells you which ones are generals, which ones are uh, just a, um, uh, like in tears sort of factor? Does it actually tell you which one? Yeah, which so which one you're, you're, as you're reading it, you're going to see columns and collapsible columns where you're going to be able to see whether that NFT is dependent on what rank. So you're going to be able to combine, you know, a captain with a captain equivalent on the Sheba army side. Um, you'll be able to do a a private with a private equivalent, et cetera, right? Nice. So you'll be able to see that. Um, you know, it would be, it would not be the smartest thing to do if you were to combine like a one of one, for example, like your- No, you know, that, and that's where I think I'm gonna be borrowing your yours, Alex. Doctor, so your doctor, like, please, for the love of God, do not, talk to me first, do not do <laughs> any combination of that one. <laughs> Once you do it, like, there's, no like going back, there's no going back. 
oh, and man, you're going to get yeah you're going to get a lot of access to a lot of things so just try to combine that with the highest possible rank that you can have i know chris scott was also talking about it and he was like i really want to get a one of one to be able to combine with a one of one so i can get the full 10 rank and yeah let's 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 make sure that those items because there are only 10 possible combinations of the one of ones that there can ever exist in in perpetuity there will never be any more and if let's say you combine today you know let's say the, the breeding was out today if you combined the one of one with a private you know or the equivalent of that you know you're you've basically just removed the possibility that a waste, yeah. yeah, it's a, it's a total waste. I mean, it's a total waste because there's going to be items dedicated to you. There's going to be items dedicated to your uh, NFT that don't exist out in the space. So I would definitely say like, hold off on those at all costs, just personal advice based on what I know what's coming. Mm-hmm. You will see them in the uh, in the breeding application. It's going to be, you know, super intuitive, but and it's almost so easy that you're going to be like, oh, I can easily just breed it. The good news is, is something that we actually built into this product is that you are able to breed your NFT and just customize it without actually minting your warrior. So. Um, Originally, when we first started building this, you know, you having an, a one of one combined with, let's say, a private, just hypothetically, right? You were going to have defined eyes, you're going to have defined fur, you're going to have defined things like that. But then we were, we, we went back to the drawing board and we said, well, we really think that you should be able to customize every element of this, every trait. And that means having gear packs. That means having like a full on solid gear combination that only you are able to access, you know? Um, so we didn't want to make sure we did. We wanted to make sure that that was customizable and also editable. So we ended up going from standard traits. Like for example, V1 would have been that you you would have always had green eyes, right? That's just like, there was nothing that you could do to change it. And then you would have also had X fur and you wouldn't have been able to change it. But we, we decided we wanted everything to be editable and we think that's the better way. But like, you're going to get access to, you know, the furry fur, the tribal fur, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, there's 23 different furs that you're going to be able to get access to once the armory comes out. So we want you to be able to kind of just play around and do what you want to do. Nice. And I'm excited, man. This changes everything that we've got going for us so far. Like, it's going to be a completely new experience for, for everyone. And it just... Yeah, it changes everything. And uh, I'm all for bringing new things to the table. And I think this is going to be something that, that will keep us engaged and, and busy for, for many months to come. And I'm, I'm very excited for it. For it. Yeah, so I just got a question in the, or we just got a question in the chat where it says, would you advise breeding a one of one with a general? I mean, I would only advise you to basically breed the highest equivalent you can with the one of one when it comes to what could not even be... gonna braid it man because i don't yeah, even think if you got a one of one don't even braid it like, look 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 just from a straight up let's just straight up talk reality is i wouldn't even breed it i wouldn't even exactly breed it. you know how much it's going to be worth later on down the track when you're yes. not even braiding it because <laughs> we're we've actually talked about um doing an exclusive entire line for the 10 possible combinations that you can possibly get out of the uh, one of one with one of one combination. And it's going to be 
as rare as I mean, it's going to be the the one of one when it comes to Shiva Doge. So there is no there is no possible combinations you can add. There's no amount of gear you can add. Like this is like this is the utmost highest custom ability. And frankly, this is everything from mutant to cyborg to just like every possible thing that could could exist. It's 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 wise to combine the two um, from a from a technical standpoint, but I would just suggest not doing it. Like, just combine your privates, combine your sergeants, combine your captains, your lieutenants, etc. Just don't. I would I would strongly advise to hold off on those because that's going to be the one that is uh, truly one of one, and it's going to be generative and you don't really uh you don't really know what's going to come out of that it's going to mean a lot but but the choice is always yours but you've heard the man <laughs> don't waste the opportunity you heard me but yeah there you go uh, i've got a quick question for you so um you can choose like um skin color or or fur color or whatnot, and you can choose eye color before you breed it. Um, before you breed, once you've made that decision and you bred, can you edit it? Obviously, we have the um, EFT, so you can change certain aspects of it. But would you then be able to say if you chose green eyes, would you then be able to say later on, actually, I want red eyes, so change them to red? Yes. So um. So there's there's multiple parts, right? There's the barracks. The barracks is where you it's basically your dashboard, your home hub, okay? And you're going to be able to see all of your Shiba Doge there. Secondarily to that, you're going to have uh, the ability to go in into every single individual Shiba Doge NFT and customize what traits you want to change. So a lot of people that we've talked to have sort of like their their pride and possession nft right they just they just love that it's got the bulletproof vest with x y and z and etc now we've made it so that you can essentially change the gear this is where our technology actually sets the industry standard forward and we've talked to the person uh, that is writing the format for dynamic nfts like he's writing the standard from an ethereum standpoint that is that that will um define the future of ethereum as a whole when it comes to nfts and he was very very bullish and very very excited about what we were trying to do because we are one of the first projects where those items right like you want to change your eyes from blue to green we are going to make that an equipable NFT. And if you think about what we do and we limit supply on green eyes, let's say green eyes is 20 possible comp, 20 possible um, supply. And you want that. You really want that for your NFT because that's your pride and possession NFT. You're going to be able to equip that. And so you can see it. And you can also display it, do whatever you want with it, but you can also unequip it and you can sell that individual item to someone else. You can say, hey, if there's only 20 of these green eyes, I'm going to sell that to you, X, Y, Z, whoever it is. I'm going to sell it to you. Um, there's only 20. So. That's something that from a technological standpoint, we're doing something very different than a lot of the other NFT projects because it's truly equipable NFTs. It's a truly equipable dynamic NFT, I guess is a better way to say it. So um, yes, you will be able to go in after you've bred. The way that it's going to work is you breed your NFTs with all the common items. So you may have a higher rank NFT and you breed them together and you will only at the moment of time at the moment of time that we breed you will only have access to the common items but after the armory goes live you will have access to the epic rare um, uncommon uh, also the legendary items and all of those are limited in supply and 
progressively limited in supply more and more as you get down the um, totem pole, if that makes sense. So, Alex, <laughs> so when you say so, when you're breeding, so it it automatically comes with common items as a equitable. Yes. Yeah, so everyone will. So the way that the contract is built is that all common items will be infinite. And when we is look that at based on ranks, no, it, it, it is not based on ranks at all. So okay. um, when you breed your NFT, you will have access to the same thing that everyone else does. So you can just customize it the way you want. But armories coming out seven days or i think it's like 10 days or i'm not entirely sure but you're gonna the armory is going to be accessible where the black market of items which are going to be higher in rarity higher in exclusivity are going to be available and you can just basically claim them claim them for um a price of free 99 and <laughs> you'll be able to get you know, the most exclusive items that are not available to everyone else. And only based on your rarity, based on your rank, you will be able to do that, if that makes sense. Sick. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, like, <laughs> the reason I ask my question, Alex, is because... Um... I like to use a lot of strategy and I like to try and get rarer items. So I was just thinking there might be an argument to say, wait until a later point. If I can establish, say, 1% of people have chosen, let's say, red eyes. So they're, they're technically very rare. Then I will choose to breed and just have red, red eyes. Um, and then that would automatically make my NFT slightly rarer just by waiting to see what everyone else chooses so i'm just trying to throw some strategy in there because that's what i like to do i tend to um, go for rare yeah. nfts so i only hold 22 nfts but nearly all of mine are high rank so because that's what i, yeah, I, would, I, say, um, I would say that there is definitely a strategy i mean we've 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 accounted we've accounted for strategy we've accounted for what it would look like if you know, you, you waited in a sense. Um, it's, it's kind of weird, right? Because a common item, if it doesn't get minted out the way that we anticipate it to be minted out would become a more rare item. So it's, it's really interesting to see how the first 72, maybe hundred hours unfold with regards to the actual minting of it. Um, it's it's definitely very interesting. It's it, I think your strategy is sound. I think your strategy is definitely uh, poised for success. So it's more so you have to factor in when you look at it, right? You're breeding your NFTs. You, you probably want to breed and just pay the gas fee, get your NFTs out there. And th what I mean by that is like, okay, you're going to get your Shiba Doge NFTs and you're going to get that into the the public sphere right but then the armory is going to come out and those are going to be limited exclusive drops first come first serve whether you can claim it or not is dependent on how fast you can get to it and there's but uh, again alex that's based on ranks there right like you can see yeah, it's an armory, totally but you can't yeah. really mint it until you actually physically have that rank available for that Drop. Correct. Correct. So like, yeah. if for example, you're ranked eight out of 10, you will, you are one of the only few, like, let's just say there's a hundred people that are able to get the highest, like legendary rank, you will be able to claim that item. And let's say that item only has 50 supply, right? So you'll be able, you'll be able to jump in, get that if you are, you know, as, as early as it, as it can be, you're going to be able to get that drop and 24 hours later from that, you're going to be able to get another drop, right? So, um, yes, the answer is it's it's largely dependent on your on your um, um, criteria. So you can you can buy the you can claim the item, you can essentially just sell the item, or you can you can equip it and floss the um, floss the ray gun, whatever it may be. 
Hey, Alex. Real quick, uh, I think uh, just another question in the same vein. Um, if I have a private uh, who has a like a tiger skin or a leopard skin, right? And then I have something equivalent of that even in Sheba, which is the lowest rank, right? And I, uh, if I merge them both, um, maybe uh, you know, whatever bread version comes out, comes out, right? Uh, does that tell me that I can I can merge these two in this manner, or it, it is to my fancy, however I want to, you know, to merge? Or a more important question is: Is there any combination that it doesn't allow? Um, no, there wouldn't be a combination that it doesn't allow. You can merge whatever you want to merge, whether it's a general. Like I, I said this before, but like you can merge a one of one with a private. Um, yeah, the reason why I said tiger skin to tiger skin, does that constitute any kind of purity or something? Uh, uh, that's a good question, do... Alex. Is that like with the leopard skin, right? I think what Teddy is saying is the leopard skin on the Sheba and the leopard skin on a Doge, does that kind of become a Sheba Doge uh, when it's bred have a leopard skin at the end of it? Or no, it's just random? No, so it's all going to be blank. Uh, look at them as like blank, yeah. blank shots. They're blank shots. Um, yeah. We chose to make it that way because we wanted, we really wanted to emphasize the point that we think NFTs are broken. Um, we think that you should be able to customize your NFT to the extent that you want to customize it. And that's a premise we're going to take. That's a theme we're going to continue pushing. I think that's where the NFT space needs to go. And the only thing that you are going to see differently than, for example, a user who has combined a higher rank with a higher rank is that you are going to have access to higher or sorry, lower supply items and items that may do certain things, um, if that makes sense. Uh, items that will be able to allow you to participate in the ecosystem in a different way. So, Alex, you, uh, you, can combine, any, you can combine, I mean, you literally can combine a general with a general equivalent and you can receive the exact same design. You can have the exact same design as somebody who combined the lowest possible combination. So I, I that yeah. that's going to be the case. At the end of the day, it's just a equibu equibu man, that's a tongue twister that shit. <laughs> just say, say, say wearable. Say wearable. The wearables, exactly. Yeah, there we go. So it all comes to that really. It's just the wearables at the end of the day. It's what's gonna really stand out on your Shiba Doge uh bread NFT. Yeah, it's it, it, it's exactly that. So, Alex, one more question. Any of the lower combinations, uh, can it ever uh, become rare, like a higher uh, number? Like, can it, uh, any, any combination between two privates, or two, meaning one, uh, one from uh, Shiba, one from Doge, if I bred them, uh, can they come to a higher ranking? Oh, that's actually uh, that's that's a great question. That's a great question, and that's something that we've been talking about, and something that we've factored in. Uh, the answer is the short answer is yes. Will you be able to ever become the equivalent of a general and a general equivalent equivalent combined? Probably not. I think that would be unfair to the people that have those ranks. Will you be able to increase the rank of your NFT? Yes, you will be able to do that. And that is by participating in areas of our ecosystem and also participating in things like the war zone, um, participating in, in different gamified mechanisms that we put together. Yes. So uh, the short answer is uh, yes, we can increase 
the 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 rank and you will be given access to certain things that aren't necessarily available to everyone and maybe your participation in those things are going to give you access to items that are not even available to even the highest ranked people so there's there's definitely a, a, a mechanic there. But generally speaking, um, look, we want to make sure that the privates still have just as much of a, of a chance to, um, uh, to succeed as the rest of them. So that is our mentality. So, uh, Alex, so you're... Um... So is that like a like a metadata sort of stamp that when you get involved with these um, uh, when you do these things to to kind of um, upgrade the rank of your say your privates is that like a a stamp sort of thing where it's gonna know that you've done all these things uh, have been involved or how how does that kind of know. Well, well, well I, 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 that I'm I'm thinking yes because we have badges assigned to your participation within the ecosystem and the community. Um, Leo, I think you were trying to stop the talk. My bad. Yeah, so uh, it's fine. Um, other projects do some, not similar things, but they do like have like events where you can like you know put your uh nft and interact with a, a certain contract or whatever and then you get uh to claim something from it so the way that they do that is it, not through the metadata they just do it based off of like the the um the transaction hashes and the interactions that happen with the contract so uh, i'm i'm not a i'm not a web developer or anything like that but that's that's something that we'd have to ask our, our developers for uh, to give you that's a better what answer, I was thinking, but, Leo, because it'd be like a point yeah. system that could be like a stamp um, when you do these um, uh, sort of um, innovation sort of things, so that at least like through your smart contract, it auto automatically knows that you've done it. These yeah, events. exactly. So, well, I the got, good news is that we are we are launching this with an upgradable smart contract. So this is um, this is kind of new territory. I want to say about a year ago, contracts were definitive. They were just permanent. You couldn't change them. You couldn't edit them. You couldn't update them. And all the audit companies weren't really knowing what was left, right, or up, or down. Uh, they, they, they tend to look at that as a centralization risk. But if you actually are involved in the community and the project, you know, there is there is a lot of value from being able to have a smart contract that is upgradable and ours is uh, we made that choice and we think it's 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 a good one and so what that means is you know some of the ideas that have been tossed around is that there will be a merge function a fusion function i guess in a sense where you can fuse your nfts which theoretically makes the entire project deflationary in and of a sense. Um, you will be able to have, I got Peter in the background. Um, we got EFTs that would essentially be able to combine five common items and you can upgrade the rank of that item by essentially having, um, by fusing them together. Um, so a lot of these things are possible and we're at the cusp of being able to do something that's so truly revolutionary for the NFT space that we can uh, we can kind of we can create the world that we want to create. Siberia, Leo. Hey, hey Alex, one one more, one more clarifying question. Alex, one more clarifying question. Once I uh, do my bread version, I I. I can go to the armory and I can pick a few things out, right? I can claim those. And then uh, once that is done, next day, if I go again, like supposing I claim the jacket of some kind, next day again, can I claim another jacket or is it restricted only one pick? By, by, no, it's going to be one per, one per NFT. One per Got NFT. It. So, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. You're, you, you can't claim a new jacket every day um, just for the sake of time. So it would be based on if you have, let's say, 100 Shiva Doge NFTs, you would be able to <laughs> utmost 100 jackets. So if, if, if you feel that item is, you know, where things are and where you want to be and, you know, what, what value you want to extract from it, then you would definitely claim 100 jackets. I'm going for 500 jackets, Alex. Yeah. You know what? Five hundred you know of them. Five hundred of everything. Yeah, look, look. Out there. look, you're the outlier. Top secret. <laughs> you're the outlier. That's Thank foolish, you, man. man. It's, it's, it's gonna be. This is gonna be sick. So I just yeah, can't wait. Can't wait. Yeah, it's definitely gonna be. Uh, I mean, I, I wish, I wish that I could convey. I think it's it's going to come it's going to come across once we actually just see how this all works but like we aren't going to be able to see the power of what this project has until we're actually able to equip things um, you know the equipable function took us massive massive amounts of money to be able to build um, I mean literally 80 hours a week from three smart contract developers for months to just be able to understand like, okay, like, are we going to create the first ever truly dynamic environment? And there's a lot of people that have said, okay, I'm going to create a dynamic NFT, but why is that not that big of a deal? Well, that's because at the end of the day, the, the, the image that you see when you own an NFT is largely controlled by metadata, right? It's, it's like some server or some dude can literally just like update it. Like half of the doodles and forgive me for just bringing them up, but like at the end of the day, you can just like update that and you can have that, but to have an actual NFT attached to another NFT, that is so huge. Like, and you can sell it too, right? Exactly. exactly. You can unequip yeah. it. You can just like have that individual subset of an NFT. And why is that important? Because we're going to create this environment where, frankly, I mean, it's crazy to say, but at the end of the day, it's like this, is, this has got so many applications that has nothing to do with meme coins. This has nothing to do with NFTs, in a uh, sense. Technology. Is, how do you apply this technology from uh-huh. equipping, unequipping? Like this is the equivalent of, 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 of having like a, a real estate company and then having four hundred companies underneath you, and like how do you unequip one, un- equip one? You know, how do you like it, it? It sets a new standard for what could possibly be. So it's, it's wild. And I hate being that cliche, which is like, Hey, yo, by the way, like you really need to just pay attention to this. And it sucks because a lot of people, they look at, you know, Oh, it's a meme coin. It's a meme coin. Okay, cool. But we're building something that is, I mean, it's, it's definitely an industry standard. The guy who's writing the standard for Ethereum is literally saying, Holy shit great job guys like this is insane this is definitely where this needs to go this is going to revolutionize gaming on the web 3 space uh, uh, Alex, know, Alex. I, I do have oh, one request and I, I sort of feel like a lot of the community probably agree with this request um when you deploy new items in the armory can you first make sure that top secret's asleep for us <laughs> Otherwise, he's gonna take it all. <laughs> all, all. All I want, Alex, you know, because I've been here from day one, from whenever you guys launch, is all I want is a death row records, uh, uh, you know, pendant for my two pack. For your, for your, uh, for your two pack. <laughs> exactly, bro. <laughs> hey, concrete, Alex and Leo, we can give you a secret there. At exactly 440 to 450, uh, 
uh, top secret is in a uh, like a blackout zone. He passes through a tunnel. Oh man! And that is. Oh, the I'm gonna be fair. I'll be fair with everyone. <laughs> I've only got 500 of these things, so I need to kind of you know breed. Oh, Alex, on the on the basis of, because this is all new and everything, and no one's really doing it on the market. Are we having some sort of marketing event to kind of push this sort of uh, you know, this pivotal sort of thing that we're doing in this space? Is there some sort of marketing so, involved? I think that's a great question. And yes, the answer is yes. And so we we took a long, hard look at everything that we're building. And we basically said, okay, so what's the best way we can bring in holders? What's the best way we can bring in attention into the things that we're doing? because right now it is a bear market. It is as bearish as it can get. Like it's just every day is bad news. And so what we decided is that we could essentially do a collaboration with our free mints. So what's the best thing you can do to bring in people, right? What, what can you do? You give away things for free, right? That's that's the NFT space, the way it is right now. And so we decided let's give away a free mint, a supply crate, that essentially through the process of you acquiring that or you being a part of it, you indirectly are understanding the value of the EFT. You are understanding the value of dynamic NFTs as a whole. And especially within the space. And so fundamentally, right, there's a lot of channels we're going to use, uh, top secret, where we can literally just promote that message through and through, right? Like there's hundreds of channels that we are already promoting the free mint. But why is the free mint important? And why is that something that we actually care about? Well, that's because guess what? Through the process of you being a part of it, you indirectly are understanding the value of the technology that we're building. And we think that's a very big step in the right direction. You know, sure. Oh, if, awesome. if, if like uh, the biggest influence in the world decided to start talking about it, you know, and maybe that may happen, you know, it's, uh, it's a function of money, but you know, maybe that would be something. But at the end of the day, you know, we're working with a very finite and very small audience. So let's bring them in. Let's let them understand what the hell is going on. You getting a supply crate today, guess what that means? That means you understand what the hell Shiba Doge is doing. That means you understand what equipable NFTs are, right? So you're either going to look at it as like, oh, I just got this random item, cool. Or you're going to look at it as like, oh, I got this random item. Let me either go and get invested in the Shiba Doge community or let me go and sell this to the Shiba Doge community because I got something that was extremely rare. It's, it's, it's like sort of an indirect path, if that makes sense. Yep. Nice. I'm sorry, I just got on. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, do we know anything new about um, at least the rewards for uh, deployment? For the upcoming season, you mean? Yes. Yeah, so we'll, we'll release all that information this month after all these releases come out. Um, likely during the time the EFT crates are, are going live, we'll have an AMA showcasing all of that. Um, we were supposed to do that about uh, last Thursday, I believe. But uh, as you guys know, something I said came up and I just never got, got around to finishing all of the spreadsheets and everything. So so we'll, we'll do that um, in, in one of these upcoming AMAs this month. But it's going to be very similar to what you guys experienced in season one and two. So there isn't like any drastic changes or anything like that. Okay, thank you. Um, 
would you expect it to be like slightly less or slightly more for the rewards? I believe we're going to have a longer season, so. so like we'll like we'll get less. yeah we'll get into it with all the details once I have all the spreadsheets ready to present and everything. So, um, I'll I'll put an announcement out out there once we're going to be announcing all that, and and you'll tune in for the AMA. And even if you can't tune in for the AMA, uh, the the spreadsheets will be so easy to understand that you can just glance over it and and completely get exactly what you're looking for. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Bullish. Any other questions, guys? Um, do we know anything about uh the uh difference in time slash date for the whitelist? Um, I don't know if I understand your question. What What do you mean, uh, the difference? Like between people that were whitelisted and people that weren't. Like, is there like a time frame difference where like the whitelisted people get in earlier or what? Like, I'm, I'm oh to yeah, yeah. yeah. To, to to mint the EFTs, you mean? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So the white anybody who's whitelisted um, is going to be able to. Uh, have a window where they can claim during a whitelist period, mint their EFTs out during the whitelist period. And then once the whitelist period is over, uh, the public sale will open. Um, that's still to be determined whether it'll be like a 24 hour window or a 48 hour window or, or, or how long of a window it will be. But um, for sure, if you're on the whitelist, you are going to have first priority and early access to minting your, your EFT. Hey, Neil, uh, quick question. Uh, last uh, AMA, uh, you, you were uh, wanting to discuss with the team, if you have so many NFTs, you said they will also qualify for a whitelist. Is, is any, any update on that for us? No, no update on that yet, TD, um, but it is something that is on my list of things to talk about during our next team meeting. Um, but... Uh, that, that's something that I'll for sure, for sure bring up during our, our team meeting this week. Thank you, Leo. I have a question. Yeah, so, go ahead, bro. We're talking about, sorry, uh, we're talking about the breeding and the crates and everything, and as far as ranking goes, um, the higher rankings get the more rarer things, correct? Yep. So, my question would be, so if a, if a person had two privates and they bred them, okay, and somebody of a higher ranking did the same thing, but they got a rarer item and they chose to sell it and you bought it, can you equip that to your lower ranking yes. NFT or no? Yes. Yeah, yeah, you can. You just won't be able to claim it from the, the armory yourself. But if you were to acquire it off of the second market, secondary market or trade it, then yeah, you can you can pretty much equip it to any rank um, NFT. Thank you. Um, one more question. In regards to uh I, I just wanted to uh see if you have like a take on um what uh the current market's like. Do do you feel like um it's gonna bounce back quickly or what? Like I I'm just trying to figure like what your take is on the current Silvergate thing that happened. Gotcha. I mean, I'm not surprised by anything negative that's happening in the market right now, just because it's been like this for the past few months. Do I think it's going to be a quick recovery? I don't think it's going to be like a overnight recovery where you sleep and wake up and everything is back to normal. That's not how I think it's going to be. Um, is it possible? Yes, it's possible because nobody could predict the markets. Just like how we can't predict they're going to be going down for sure, we can't predict they're going to be going up. But um, what I do know um, is a lot of the market, not just the crypto market, the 
entire market, the financial market, is something that is reliant to the whole world to be successful. Um, and I, I, there are some ma major people in the background that kind of, it, it, in a way, I want to say all the markets are manipulated. I don't know by mm -hmm. who or what entity, but there is no reason for everything to move in the same direction, the same way, same time, every single time. It's just all manipulation, guys. And I mean, it's sad. That's the truth. But what can we do? We're just by byproducts of the whole situation. But one thing is the fact that bear markets happen and bull markets happen. Right now we're in a bear market, but that just means that the next thing that happens when a change comes is the bull market is going to be here. So you just have to ride it out. And depending on how long that takes, I don't know, but uh, I know it's going to be tough for a lot of people. Um, some people see it as a negative. Some people see it as a positive. I see it as a positive because I like to um, use the, the opportunity of the bear market to kind of like, you know, make new purchases on things and get into new investments that I know I, I like for the long term. So you, you just got to you just got to understand that, you know, looking at charts every single day is not healthy. Um, it'll it'll eventually drive you crazy. Um, you just have to believe in the companies and the products that you that you invest in and you buy. And like that, you, you'll know that whatever you purchase that you've made is something that you're happy with, regardless of how the markets perform. It's not just that, Leo, as well. Like um, other projects out there, they're dead and gone. Uh, Shiba Doge itself with, um, you know, we're, you guys are still here building um, throughout this bear market. So people will need to realize that uh, are what projects they they are going to be buying into. Do you know what I mean? So, um, and it's, 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 um, you know, it's uh, something that we're, we're here. We know that you guys are working and uh, it's, it's, it's a great investment at the end of the day. I think yeah, I agree with discount. you. Man. I think yeah. there's a discount. I got a question real quick, uh, Leo. Sure, go ahead. Um, about the equipables, um, I heard you mention you said you can merge a few things together. Uh, let's say, um, let's say I, I have a few sets, and I wanted to, you know, uh, breed a few of them, four or five of them, and I just got a bunch of equipables, a, a bunch of different NFTs. Would I be able to just Equip, equip one NFT with like everything. Is that possible? So let's say you have let's say like you to have merge one... everything together. Like, yeah, I got you. I got you. So so your EFTs, like let's say you have let's say you have two NFTs, right? Two Shiba Doge NFTs, and they're all equipped. You can yeah. go into your your armory, take off all of its accessories, all of its clothes. And it, those those are all individual um, NFTs itself, and then you can pick and choose. So you have a you have a wardrobe, let's say a chest full of full of items. Let's say you have yeah. one jacket, so you got two pairs of shoes, you know whatever. Um, okay. You can you yeah you can pick and choose what you want to put on which whichever NFT you'd like, and you know as long as you have enough of those items, you could put them on as many of those, those uh, nfts that you have so uh oh, okay. think of it as yeah think of it as like a like a closet right yeah, you yeah, walk yeah. Into your closet yeah exactly so so that, yeah it's simple bro you guys will figure it out it's very it's very easy to understand like once that the the user interface is, is out and you guys are tinkering with it um i i'm sure you guys will will find it very easy to navigate so so leo yeah. on on that on the fact of you say for say wardrobe uh, is that based on our own wardrobe within the platform or is that like scattered everywhere like say in our open seas sort of you know wallet is it uh, how does it no, it'll, it'll be it'll be based on it'll be based on your holdings right in in your wallet but um open sea will um like if you go to our our eft collection on open sea you'd see how like there's like you know, certain amount of party hats. There's a certain amount of 
the diamond hands. Yeah. There's certain yeah. So that's how I would that's how I would display on open sea. Okay, but does that kind of group it all together when you're in? Uh, so to to kind of equip these wearables, do we need to use the platform, or we could just do that on open seas, or? No, you'd have to do it. I, I believe you'd have to do it just uh, through through our um, through our UI. Oh. I don't know if you could do it through uh, OpenSea. Uh, you can definitely do some. You can definitely acquire the assets on OpenSea, and then that would yeah. translate in your wallet. Yeah, you can buy them on OpenSea, but but you you won't be able to like equip and unequip on OpenSea. Uh, as you're still there, Alex, I've actually got a question. I know it's a bit of a changed subject. Well, it, it's NFT related. Are we are we looking at following what's going on with ordinals? Um, because they seem to be picking up a lot of stream uh, and they seem to be the potentially one of the next big trends um, being on the Bitcoin um, blockchain. And not be and being hard coded into the blockchain rather than being uh, metadata updated. He's definitely on our radar. I, I mean, we'll say, we'll say. Leo, that might be on your radar, but I'm so focused on our project. I'm so focused on what we're doing and trying to build on the Ethereum blockchain. Frankly. Uh, the best answer I could give you is that I literally am, am, am unaware. Um, as long as it doesn't affect, as long as the, from a technical standpoint, is going to change the fundamentals of the industry, I'm frankly not that interested. Uh, I think, I think it does have a potential to change the fundamentals of the industry. I think... Because it's such new technology, being able to hard code an NFT into a blockchain rather than upload metadata, it's a different way of doing it. Um, it would mean the release of a whole new collection from us, um, but I think it's something definitely to keep an eye on. I personally think there's a problem with hard coded metadata, and I'll tell you why. Because it allows you to not change. It doesn't give you the opportunity to dynamically adjust your plan. And yes, you know, at some in some sense, that is the purpose of an NFT as a whole. And like, you should definitely have complete end all be all ownership of XYZ item or NFT. But the problem that I see with that is that it's not conducive to the environment of the future. It is it is great for now, it is great for here, but it isn't the future of being able to build a dynamic environment that exists outside of um, just what you originally put, right? So like, for example, if you were to buy, you know, an NFT today, and that's a static image. That's the equivalent of a crypto punk, man. It's the equivalent of a crypto punk. Like, okay, it's not going to ever change. But like, what does that do for you? You know, what is that? Is, is, is there a variation where the crypto punk is going to become a 3D asset within a game? Is there um, that crypto punk going to become um, a livable, breathable thing? You know, I think that that's what, I struggle with when it comes to these static, truly static projects that exist on the NFT ecosphere, if that makes sense. Yeah, 100 percent makes sense. You know, you don't want to be stuck with something. You know, if if the the the, the value of a project is in your ability to be able to adapt to a ever-growing industry we're talking about an industry that literally there's no rules there's no guidelines we're talking about web3 okay like this stuff can change tomorrow tomorrow there could be an entirely new principle there could be an entirely new way to do this and do you want to be stuck with a static image where the developers themselves do not have access to be able to um accommodate that future 
I don't think so. I think that would be a, a an unwise decision. You want the developers to be able to adapt and and see the new future as being something that they can integrate within their ecosystem. You owning an NFT is essentially you having sort of like a, a totem pole. You put the flag on the moon, okay? You put the flag on the moon as to why and how that NFT is yours or access to that, right? If that token goes from a dog to a, to a cat, you want to be able to make sure that the developers have access to be able to do that because that's the trend of the industry. And you want us to be able to follow that. And you don't want us to be stuck in a position where we can't modify and adjust. I, I'm, I'm very confident that that is the future of where this all goes because down the road, you're going to have an inventory of items that are going to be worth X. We don't know what they're going to be worth. But you want to make sure that those items, whether it's participating in a metaverse, whether it's participating in a in a new project, or maybe there's a collaboration, you know, maybe maybe Board AV Yacht Club is somehow going to somehow integrate with us. So you want to make sure that you have the ability to participate in that, as opposed to, hey guys, by the way, we're going to launch a V2 because we didn't we didn't plan for that. Do you know what I mean? A hundred percent agree. There's a lot of fads that come and go in in this industry, man. Um, not just in this industry, but but technology in general. There's a lot of fads, and some people, when they come across a fad, they think um, it's the next big thing, and they'll they'll tunnel vision onto that, and they'll spend a lot of effort, resources, time, money um, to, to to focus on building around that fad, and by the time they're it, it comes time for them to release their product, that fad is already is it, it's over, so. We, we think we have a pretty solid plan as to what we want to accomplish and how we want to accomplish things moving forward. Um, uh, so, I mean, I, I do agree with Alex, you know, we stick to our plan and there's very little that sways us away from our plan. Um, the only things that would sway us from, from what we're uh, already on the road to do is if we get an amazing idea moving forward or we're like, okay, this is what needs to happen and this is, this is, all hands on deck on this idea. So um, that's that's the beauty of uh, innovation, guys. You know, you got to be able to recognize what's uh, what's real, what's not, what's a fad, what isn't, and stay true to yourself and stay true to your plan. A question is, um, what are you doing to bring the value of the token up? I mean, we're we're just running our project the way we see fit. The 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 value of the token uh, transcribes to the successes that we make as a community and as a project. And I mean, it's it's a bear market. We can't really control anything about that. So. Cool, cool. Cool, cool. Can, we just, uh, Leo, can we just acknowledge the fact that through this bear market, we've we've done substantially better than most people, uh, most projects. I mean, oh, dude, some projects got obliterated off the face of the blockchain. <laughs> um, some fell apart. Some are. I mean, we're here trying to save other projects. That, that we're in the position where we're trying to save other projects. So yeah, I would definitely say we're in a good spot. Exactly. Hey, Leo, cousin KK. Hey, cousin. What's up, buddy? Hey, how's it going? Bullish good, how are you? Normal. I'm good. Hey, um... Um, Siberia, just a just a hint would do. Is it the one with the toy maker 
or the um, say the air airport sort of going across the sea. Which 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 Siberia game are you guys talking about? I've never played it. It, it, <laughs> it, it hasn't came out yet. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I was trying to look into that. So it hasn't come out. Okay, I'll check it out. Yeah. See some old no stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely would. Uh, I wouldn't speculate. Um, there is a public document. You guys can go find it. Uh, that is going to give a hint as to what we're doing with that. Um we don't like to jump the gun in terms of, uh, you know, different different utilities and applications. So I would say uh, definitely take a chance to look at all of the published materials related to our project and what that could potentially mean for us. We'll let you infer that, but we're... Uh, we're definitely, we're definitely moving towards the path of Siberia. Siberia is the promised land, guys. Leo, Siberia to the moon, baby. I'm, uh, fair right. enough for me. I'm just trying to get a, get a grasp of what's going on. All right, guys. Um, I think we're in a good place to end the AMA here, talking about Siberia and all kinds of things here. Um, if anybody has any further questions, feel free to slide into our DMs. We'll never DM you first. Feel free to tag us in the uh, Telegram chat and we'll get back to you. But we'll be back here on Monday for the Monday AMA. Obviously, we have a release coming out on Monday with breeding. So that's something to look forward to. Uh, and also a reminder, we are running that promotion that I talked about earlier in today's AMA. So any Shiba Army mints from now until uh, the time of breeding, the time that breeding starts, will all qualify to get a free EFT crate uh, airdrop to them. So no competing with anyone at the time of mint, nothing like that comes with a free crate. So that's something to look forward to as well. Um, and with that being said, guys, we're going to sign off here. And as always, if you miss Doge, that sucks. If you miss FIBA, that also sucks. If you miss FIBA Doge and Siberia and breeding and season three and burn and everything else we got going on. Man, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. We love you all. We'll talk to y'all soon. Yeah. Peace. Peace. Love. Peace. Bye.